Okay, guys. Um, I'm going to show you how to set affinity on Seven Days to Die. Uh -huh. <laughs> Sorry about that. So, um, I don't know if you guys have potatoes like I do, but um, I've noticed when I play Seven Days to Die, I can't set affinity because um, I have their anti-cheat. So, what you do is you come over here, right-click, Properties. You want to go to Local Files here, and you want to go to Browse Local Files. Click that. Now, you'll have um, the Seven Days to Die launcher here. As you can see, I've already made a shortcut for this. That way, I can just click on that from the desktop to go right to the launcher if I have to. Um, after you set up everything, you can still use the regular uh, launcher. You can still use uh, Steam to open it and everything. Uh, so I'll double click that. So you can see right here, I've already turned off this right here anti-cheat this is what's stopping you from changing your affinity for your cpus so once you click this off go ahead and run and save as default so that should start the game up i got the little arrow there we go i got my um, msi uh, Ravia tuner up, up there so you can see the uh, the cores working um, and it's showing on OBS okay cool so once it's all loaded up you can um, start messing with the uh, CPUs and stuff I'm gonna show you guys quick right here um, you go to CPU so you guys can see I have the um, Task Manager here. Now, if you want to see all your cores, just right click here and you could show. Um, oh, it's actually right here. So you can go overall. I'll show the overall. If you go here, you get logical and you can see all your CPUs working. So now that's going. All right. I got just the thing for. Now I got the game running. Now what you can do, you can see up in the top right corner, you can see I have all, all the cores are working. Uh, right here, they're all pretty much identical. Um, so what you can do here is go to Details, scroll to 70s to Die, right click, Set Affinity. Now you only need four cores to run this game. It's It only recommends four cores, even at the highest recommendations. So what you can do is you can click off all these cores. You can have uh, four cores running. I can even run the game in two cores. So right now the game's running two cores. So, I, oops. Now you can see when I when I do play the game though, um, you can see the two cores in the very top. They're running at nearly a hundred percent almost all the time. So if anything really happened in the game, it would start bogging down because I'm running a hundred percent. And there's a chance I could probably blow out my processors. So. What I'm going to do is um, get this back up here. Now I'm going to run it. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Oh, derp. derp. So I'm going to run it at four cores. And what this is going to allow me to do, like say I want to run uh, Pandora, but I don't want it to affect the game every time it loads a song, because whenever Pandora loads a song, it hits 100% CPU. Now, if I have a Pandora running across all my CPUs, even at 8, uh, I notice the game will just freaking freeze. It'll lag hard. So what you can do, um, I've tested this already. Pandora, you can have one core running Pandora. And the only time it really hits the CPU is when it's loading a song. So if you want to like play a game, listen to Pandora, run OBS, and do a bunch of other things, then you can do that. I've actually already... Screwed around with OBS's settings right here. And I'm recording this with OBS. You can see here, I'm only running three cores to run OBS. So I have eight cores right now. Run four or five for the game, depending on what I want to do. So I could run five in here and run three on OBS. And hopefully OBS and everything will run good. I haven't really tested out too much on um, the stream. I know before I had a really potato setup 
and I only had four cores. And I was able to play the game and run OBS as long as I, you know, split the cores and stuff. And um, I was able to play the game. It wasn't the greatest stream in the world, but I was able to do the stuff. But um, anyways, that's pretty much how you set Affinity up for um, seven days to die. And um, I hope that helps out, guys. Um, if you guys are running, like, potato setups, you know, you don't have the power to run it. Um, like, say you have a six core, it's running like shit. And you want to run a couple other things. You know, you could just set this game to four cores and just run it. But anyways, I'm going to run the game for a minute. Just so you can guys can kind of see how it runs. I mean, I'm running... Oop. There's a normal little lag right there. That happens a lot in this game. But on my, my, my potato here, I'm still running somewhere around 50 frames or so. I usually run the game at 40 frames just so it'll... Uh, so it'll work. Done. There I go. Yeah. So, I mean, the game's recommended to run at four cores. So, if you, you could run the game at four cores. Like right now, you can see up there, four of the cores are around 50 to 60. Uh, the rest of the cores. Um, about 20 or 13 or so, depending on uh, what's going on. I'm recording now too, so you'll see the spikes pop up here and there on the CPU. But um, you can tell which cores are going, which ones are um, running the game and stuff. Also, with your um, with your CPU um, task manager open, you can see how different the lines are, the performance lines are for each one. You can see down here, these are all pretty much OBS and stuff. And on the top, this is the game. But anyways, I hope that helps you guys out. Um, I know a lot of guys, you know, you don't have the best PC, the best PCs. You don't have two PC setups running for OBS and stuff like that. So um, if this helped out, you guys go ahead and drop a like, subscribe, all that fancy YouTube stuff. And uh, don't forget, go check out my... Uh, channel over on Twitch, um, Twitch TV, Jello Bledo. And uh, yeah, hope to see you guys later.